there is a cluster of islands at the very north of the Pacific called the Federated States of Micronesia, better known as the FSM. This island nation is home to just over 100,000 people. Compared to the other countries of the world, the FSM is made up of relatively small islands in a gigantic ocean. Many of our islands are low-lying islands. Uh, we have 607 islands, uh, about 20 or what are high islands and the rest are just low islands like the Marshalls. Uh, and so many of the com communities living on those uh, islands are very vulnerable, whether it be sea level rise, uh, you know, drought, because they have very limited uh, water, water resources. So uh, that is the challenge uh, that the country faces uh, as a nation, as a country. Impact of climate change, if you look at the projections, in the next 50 years, there will be less typhoon, but it will be more intense. And that is the fear. Sea level rise due to climate change affects many parts of this country differently. Before, uh, you know, when it's, the seas are really high or rough, then they of course wash the beaches off and then they're built again. But that's not happening anymore. What we're seeing is that the actual island is eroding and the trees that used to be 50 feet away from the coastline are no longer there. And actually, many of the islands uh, now, especially the ones with lagoons, are actually losing houses that used to be, uh, you know, way inland, like let's say 50 feet, 100 feet inland. They've, I've, we have pictures of islands that have, with houses that are al already in the water. You know, I mean, just took, out, took away people's homes. For the school and surrounding community of Awak, sea level rise has been taking away portions of their school compound bit by bit for the past three decades. From the time I was in you know, this school back in 1980s, 90s, the shore was like 20 feet away from the Cayman Wall. And over the years, it has been you know, eroded. And there's a lot of erosion from the, that site. And so, set koto kawela pwel kase sang ni chu ko choto kolo pupsang o pwel tukitukla tukitukla sa. Awak Elementary School caters for students from 14 different communities. The Pacific Community, through its Building Safety and Resilience in the Pacific Program, BSRP, used funding from the European Union to build a Gabian Wall around the eroding portion of the Awak School grounds. Before it was built, rocks fall in the water and it wasn't that safe for our students to walk over there. It was scary because we were afraid if we walk on the rocks, it might fall in the water and we fall in the water. It's much more safer if we want to play games and if our balls or something that we play with go over there, we can run and get instead of being scared to go there. It is good for our school. Now stop the eroding of the soil and we don't have to worry about the land getting smaller and smaller every year. 50 years from now, it will look the same. Instead of, you know, walking there and there's no soil after the 50 years because there's no good wall there that will protect the erosion of the land. So that came out of that um, uh, vulnerability and capacity assessment where the uh, impact of uh, seawater intrusion into the, into the school compound was threatening a double storey building and also limiting the playing space for children. So that became a priority for them. So, and that has been completed, so it has achieved both. 
uh, in terms of stopping uh, the, the intrusion of uh, salt water into the playing ground and also not threatening the classroom building. The FSM shows a very progressive approach in adapting to climate change. Not only are they consulting stakeholders before making development decisions, but they are also future-proofing the projects by analyzing how it would benefit or safeguard them over the long-term course of climate change and during sudden natural catastrophes. So for FSM, when they integrate, they sort of look at their projections. So they look at the impact of climate change and how it will um, uh, affect the livelihoods out there in the islands. So the, the development of the Joint National Action Plan was looking at both their day-to-day -day, uh, living and also their future vulnerabilities. How that vulnerabilities can be reduced when these projections are scientifically based. So combining the sciences and then working with the communities to come up with uh, uh, adaptations or mitigation strategies that will at least help in reducing those vulnerabilities. In terms of packaging the project, we involve a lot of stakeholders in other communities themselves to come in and help us uh, you know, uh, identify uh, what are the challenges and then uh, identify the solutions, uh, what they think are appropriate solutions to the challenges that they face. And so in uh, doing that uh, from the beginning, they took ownership of it, uh, and then it's not like us coming to them and telling them this is what you need for your community. They identified their uh, challenges, uh, identified the way they need to uh, you know, uh, address it, and then when we worked with them, it's essentially just uh, you know, uh, assisting them with the resources to be able to do what they needed. And so in the communities, help to make sure that the projects are implemented in their own communities. So it really helped with the implementation because the communities feel a part of it, they want to do it because it's for their own benefit, it's for them.